Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Every positive integer is a sum of distinct powers of 2. Now, when we say powers of 2, we mean numbers like 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3, and so on and so forth. Right, so the power must be an integer greater than or equal to zero for our purposes. In addition, when we say sum, well, the sum may contain only one term. For example, the positive integer 16 is equal to two to the power of four. So that would be a sum of distinct powers of two. In that case, we only have one power of two in that sum. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. Now, we're trying to prove a saying about all positive integers. So we're gonna use induction. Specifically, we're gonna use strong induction. And to start out the induction, we're gonna prove a base case. And the base case we're gonna prove is one is a sum of distinct powers of two. Well, we know that one is equal to two to the power of zero. So one is a sum of distinct powers of two. So this completes our base case. Now let's move on to the induction step. In the induction step, we're gonna give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer. I'll call it N. And we assume for all positive integers k less than or equal to n, k is a sum of distinct powers of 2. And the whole goal of the induction step at this point is to prove that n plus 1 is a sum of distinct powers of 2. Now, we're going to denote p as the set of all powers of 2 less than n plus 1. Well, we know that 1 is a power of 2, and 1 is less than n plus 1. So, 1 is an element of p, which means p is non-empty. In addition, since every element of p is an integer between 1 and n plus 1, p must be finite. So p is non-empty and finite. Now if you recall, every non-empty finite set of integers has a largest element. Every non-empty finite set of real numbers has a largest element. So p must have a largest element. And since every element of p is a power of 2, we're going to say that the largest element of p is 2 to the power of s. Now since 2 to the s is the largest element of p, and 2 to the s plus 1 is larger than 2 to the s, it could not be the case that 2 to the s plus 1 is an element of p. Now, we know that 2 to the s plus 1 is a power of 2, but since 2 to the s plus 1 is not an element of p, this means it cannot be the case that 2 to the s plus 1 is less than n plus 1. We must instead have that 2 to the s plus 1 is greater than or equal to n plus 1. And now, let's take this inequality and subtract 2 to the s on both sides. If we do that, we get n plus 1 minus 2 to the s is less than or equal to 2 to the s plus 1 minus 2 to the s. And 2 to the s plus 1 minus 2 to the s is equal to 2 to the s. And since 2 to the s is an element of p, we know that 2 to the s is less than n plus 1. So we see that n plus 1 minus 2 to the s is less than n plus 1. Now, n plus 1 minus 2 to the s and n plus 1 are both integers. 
So to say that n plus 1 minus 2 to the s is less than n plus 1 is equivalent to saying that n plus 1 minus 2 to the s is less than or equal to n. And since n plus 1 and 2 to the s are both integers, and n plus 1 is greater than 2 to the s, we must have that n plus 1 minus 2 to the s is a positive integer. So, n plus 1 minus 2 to the s is a positive integer less than or equal to n. So, we can apply our induction hypothesis to n plus 1 minus 2 to the s. Right, because we know that our induction hypothesis works for every positive integer less than or equal to n. So, if we take k to be n plus 1 minus 2 to the s, we have that n plus 1 minus 2 to the s is a sum of distinct powers of 2. And we're going to say that the sum goes 2 to the e1 plus 2 to the e2 plus dot 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 plus 2 to the en. And since this is a sum of distinct powers of 2, this means for all integers i and j between 1 and n, where i is not equal to j, we have that ei is not equal to ej. And to put that briefly, we're really saying each ei and ej are distinct. Now from here, we are going to show that n plus 1 is a sum of distinct powers of 2. And to do that, we're going to split this up into two cases. Either one of these exponents is equal to s, or none of them are equal to s. So let's start with the case where one of these exponents are equal to s. Well, we know that every term in this sum is positive. And one of these terms is equal to 2 to the s. So this entire sum must be greater than or equal to 2 to the s. And this sum is equal to n plus 1 minus 2 to the s. So n plus 1 minus 2 to the s is greater than or equal to 2 to the s. If we add 2 to the s to the other side, we get 2 to the s plus 2 to the s. And that's equal to 2 to the s plus 1. So n plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2 to the s plus 1. But let's remind ourselves that 2 to the s plus 1 is greater than or equal to n plus 1. So these two inequalities tell us that n plus 1 must be equal to 2 to the s plus 1. And therefore, n plus 1 is a sum of distinct powers of 2. In fact, it's just a power of 2. So this completes the case where one of these exponents is equal to s. Now, let's move on to the other case where none of these exponents are equal to s. In other words, all of these exponents are not equal to s. Well, we see that if we were to take this equation and add 2 to the s to the other side, we have that n plus 1 is equal to 2 to the s plus 2 to the e1 plus 2 to the e2 plus dot 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 plus 2 to the en. Now, we know from what we said up here that each ei and ej are distinct. So each of the powers of 2 from here to here are distinct. All that's left to verify is that 2 to the s is distinct from all of these. Well, we already know that that's true. So n plus 1 is a sum of distinct powers of 2. So in either case, we have shown that n plus 1 is a sum of distinct powers of 2. And so putting this together now, we started with the base case where we showed that 1 is a sum of distinct powers of 2. In the induction step, we gave ourselves an arbitrary positive integer n, and we assumed that all positive integers between 1 and n 
are sums of distinct powers of two. From there, we proceeded to prove that n plus one is a sum of distinct powers of two, and we did. So this completes the induction. And that means we have proven precisely the theorem. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.